to another Saturday morning and a beautiful Saturday morning at that. And we are back, back to do what we like to do, which is to deliberate over our dear nation's course of democratization and indeed overall development. My name is Abna Tabi and this is New Day Saturday edition. A very warm welcome to you. We are live on TV3 here in Accra. We're also live on 3FM 92.7, also in Accra. And we are live on Connect 97.1 FM in Takrad in the Western Region. And of course, you're connecting with our global audience on the internet at 3news.com. So it's just about 38 days to election 2016 and lots of twists and turns. This week saw yet another series of twists and turns and a number of court uh, cases reported in the news and it seems that EC is a party in all or perhaps almost all of these cases. So we'll be looking at events of the week and then the topics that we'll be discussing this morning. So the High Court Accra, um, presided over by Justice Che Bafo on Friday the 28th of October 2016, quashed the decision of the EC disqualifying uh, Dr. Papakwesi Indum of the um, PPP, I mean disqualifying his nomination as a presidential candidate for the Progressive People's Party in the 2016 presidential elections. Now the court specifically ordered that the EC should allow Papa Kwesi Indum to amend his nomination form in accordance with Regulation 9 of CI 94. But really I've been wondering, will we see an end to the suits against the EC? It seems the closer we get to the elections, the more suits the EC is um, being involved in. First, we started with Abu Ramadan 1, then there was Abu Ramadan 2, then we sought clarification in respect of the decision by the Supreme Court in Abu Ramadan 2. Now, we thought we were out of the woods when we had that clarification in the Abu Ramadan 2 case, but of course, that wasn't to be. In any case, that after all, that the subject matter of the voters' register was for the longest time the biggest contentious issue as we moved into the 2016 election. So obviously when we had that out of the way, we thought we were out of the woods, but obviously that wasn't meant to be. So we started again a number of series of, uh, a series of cases, starting with the nomination fees that was challenged by the PPP. According to the PPP, the fees of 50,000 and 10,000 CDs for presidential and parliamentary respectively were quite excessive and they sought uh, some redress in court. The injunction that they applied for to restrain the EC from collecting that amount was however not given. And so excessive or not excessive, the filing fees were paid and indeed the parties paid and they complained yet still. Now, was that to be the end of suits against the EC going into election 2016? Of course not. Not with what we know now. Um, then, of course, came Monday, the 10th of October 2016, when the EC made that big announcement disqualifying 12 presidential candidates. Indeed, that Monday I'd like to refer to as the Black Monday, when uh, 12 presidential candidates, including the PPP, NDP, PNC, APC, and GCPP, etc., were disqualified. The presidential candidates were disqualified from contesting the 2016 elections for a number of stated reasons. Now, this decision by the EC activated a multitude of suits against the EC. Now, currently, there are five suits pending against the EC in the High Court. We're talking about suits filed by the PPP, APC, GCPP, NDP, and indeed the PNC. Now, some say that this is a test for our fledgling democracy, but could these suits have been avoided? What are the implications moving forward? And are we likely to see more parties join the bandwagon in the light of the PPP's recent uh, victory, which is considered by many as a win for democracy and the rule of law? Now, these are some of the issues we'll be looking at when we discuss this very recent uh, landmark decision by the courts. Of course, we'll be looking at events on the campaign trail. And here we're looking at the NPP and the press conference of this week where earlier on in the week the NPP had its press conference primary among the issues raised there is Ghana's um, the fact that Ghana is offering one of its gas fields to China in return for 
some $3 billion by the Chinese Development Bank. Now, this uh, loan has been pending since 2012. We know the whole history about that. We'll be looking at this issue when we begin talking. We'll be asking lots of questions about it, looking at it from the NPP perspective as against the government position. Of course, the NPP also uh, said in its press conference that Doomsaw will return in 2017. We shall interrogate this matter as well. And of course, events happening, campaign trail. We have um, Otumfa Santehne making some statements cautioning some chiefs within his jurisdiction to either stay away from partisan politics or abdicate their stools. We'll be looking at this issue some more. And of course, we'll touch on CPP launching its campaign uh, today. These are the issues lined up for discussion this morning. Quickly, let me introduce who the panelists are. We have Mr. Abu Jinapo. He is a member of the new Patriotic Party, NPP. We have Mr. Kwame Jantua. He is a member of the CPP, also the vice chairperson of PIAC, that's the Public Interest and Accountability Commission. And we have Mr. Ibrahim Amaliba. He is a lawyer and a <coughs> member of the ruling National Democratic Congress, NDC. Good morning to you, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good, Good to morning, have you here. Good Great. So indeed, a number of court cases this week and lots of interesting happenings. But we are looking at what is being looked at as victory or vindication for the PPP, particularly the um, presidential candidate. Dr. Papakwesi Indum. I would want us to start uh, on this issue, and I will start with you, uh, Abu Jinapo, that the decision by the courts, really, in my, from my perspective, is a declaration of the law. The judge pretty much went, declared what the law was. My question is, was this, was this something that could have happened on the blind side of the ECI, i.e. that CI 94 is there. It has certain provisions, regulations. 92, for instance, give the opportunity and all. How could this have happened that this matter went to court? All right. <clears throat> Thank you. And um, let me first of all say good morning to your cherry viewers. Um, it can happen. It's mm. possible that the Electoral Commission is a, is, a, is, is, is a human institution. And besides it being a human institution, and therefore, is susceptible to making mistakes. Um, the matters which are before us and the matters which were adjudicated upon by the High Court, to some extent, uh, to actually a very large extent, borders on interpretation of provisions of uh, a statute. Mm. And therefore, the Electoral Commission can get it wrong when it comes to the interpretation of a statute. Now, it's also very important. But these are rules coming from within itself. I mean. Yes, it's, it's important for me to also make the point. Mm. First, your direct answer to your question, the Electoral Commission can get it wrong. Mm. One, they can make mistakes. This is not exactly a mistake in my view. It's, it's um, a, a misapprehension or um, a, a misunderstanding of the dictates of the law and a misapplication of the law, at least to the extent of the ruling of the High Court. That is what the court said, mm. that the Electoral Commission misapprehended itself in terms of the remits and the dictates of the provisions of CI-94, mm -hmm. um, that the Electoral Commission did not apply the provisions properly and, 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 and appropriately. Now, it's also important for me to be quick in adding that in a constitutional uh, uh, regime, in a constitutional environment, the law vests powers to various institutions of state. In this particular case, the law vests a legal power in the Electoral Commission of Ghana mm -hmm. to make a determination <coughs> as to the qualification or otherwise of a presidential candidate or a presidential hopeful. The law vests that in the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission proceeded to exercise that mandate. Mm -hmm. The mandate, exercise of the mandate was challenged in the court. The High Court has made a pronouncement <coughs> and, and held that the Electoral Commission wrongly exercise its mandate in this particular instance. Now, Abena, the reason why I said let me be quick to add is that if, even the high court decision can be challenged, as you know. Sure. Yeah. And, and it, 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 it may as well turn out that the high court was right on the law. 
It may also turn out that the High Court was not right. But at least, for now, for the purposes of where we are, the, <coughs> the, the decision or the reasoning or the holdings of the High Court stands. Now, I think it is good for Ghanaian democracy. There's no two ways about that. A rule of law. Mm -hmm. That is how a society is to be governed. A body is given a mandate, is given a legal mandate to conduct affairs in a particular way. It does conduct those affairs. A party or a person is aggrieved. A person did not take the law into his hands. A person did not go on the streets shouting. Dr. Papa Kosindum went to court, and I commend him highly for that. That is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Nana Kunedu Ajima Rollins is in court. That is the way to go. He's gone to court. The court has made a pronouncement. I expect that the Electoral Commission, with the greatest of respect, will find a very intelligent way of dealing with this matter so that the electoral calendar will not be compromised unduly and so also that we can deal with this matter with a lot of finesse. Now, these are my preliminary observations of what has happened. I'm asking the nitty gritties of the ruling and sure. the matters arising from it. I'm sure we'll get so that we'll pick it up from there, yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Gentua. Mr. Abujinapo here has talked about the fact that indeed, yes, the EC could have gotten it wrong, and indeed, yes, th on this occasion, this is what happened as of current times. This is the decision of the High Court, and so yes, we're going by that. My question is, yes, but given the fact that uh, there's been a number of suits, Abu Ramadan 1, Abu Ramadan 2, there's this new one about the collation sheet having a column for... Uh, um, party agents or polling agents to be signing and all of that. Consistently, we seem to see a trend. Court cases, court cases. And most often, the EC loses out. Is this something that we should be encouraging? Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to my fellow panelists. And is it, is it perhaps, does it tell on the ECs? When you say encouraging, do you mean that if particular parties are not happy with certain decisions that the EC have made, they should take it to court. Is that the encouraging bit you're talking about? No, of course about? not. That, that is definitely the way to go. But I'm saying, yes, G getting it wrong. I'm talking about the rules, the regulations by the EC itself. And it seems consistently when parties, aggrieved parties go to court, decisions come out and they seem to be in favor of the other party and not the EC. So it's, for me, it points to a certain direction that perhaps there is some misunderstanding of the rules or what? That, that, that's what I, I'm saying, I, looking I, at the trend. One, I believe that the court in making their decisions also have a responsibility to the country. That responsibility is to make sure that the there is no violence or there is no uh, unwanted disturbance because of decisions made by the EC. And so because of that, they should critically look at those implications and make sure that they can sort it out. Now, in terms of the EC making their decisions, I think they should, at any given time, thoroughly especially the fact that we have IPAC, explain the rules and regulations and procedures that political parties have to go through to be able to file their nomination forms without any challenges. Yeah. If that hasn't been happening, then definitely you find situations like this. We should remember that the judiciary is part and parcel of the governance system in this country. Sure. And they need to be sure that whatever decision they take is in the interest of the country. Not in the interest of an individual, but in the interest of the country. Now, it so happens that they have, uh, uh, they have given a verdict in favor of the PPP. It doesn't end there. It doesn't mean that automatically they are going to be part of the group of four that are going to stand for this election. It would have to come back to the Electoral Commission. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure whether the Electoral Commission actually told us what the misdemeanors in uh, Papa Kosi Indum's application form was. I'm not sure whether they told because I don't think I've read it. Depending on what those mistakes were and how long it takes to correct, I did not also hear the court giving them a time frame 
in which they were supposed to rectify these mistakes. That, that, that would be determined by the EC as yeah. its own processes. So, so if it so happens that the EC gives them two days, three days, and they can't do it within that time scale, depending on the magnitude of what they have to correct, what happens? Do they go back to court? The fear that some people are saying is that all these court cases might lead to the point where we might not have the elections on December 7th. I beg to differ on that, on that course because if these cases in court are going to be handled, and I'm, I'm sure the judiciary will handle it as quickly as possible because of the deadline of December 7th, mm -hmm. then the EC should also make sure that they also speed up whatever it is they need to speed up for us to meet the December 7th uh, date. But yes, it is quite disturbing for an institution like the Electoral Commission to take such decisions and it's been overturned by a court. Um, probably they felt that because they have the, 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 the standard of a high court, they are not subject to what the judiciary uh, decision the judiciary made. But everybody is subservient to the laws of this country. Even the first gentleman of, of the land, President Mahama himself, he is under the laws of this country. So I hope that from this point on, once all the court cases, we are what? How many days to elections? 38. 38 days to elections. That we can clear all these things out of the way so that we can have an election which the aftermath of the decision as to who won will not now cause a challenge for us in this country. Mm, very well. Mr. Maliba, yes. so moving on from where Mr. Janta left off, the, the, we, we have a certain constraint time and the number of suits pending. So clearly, there's a need for us to work expeditiously. Moving forward, how, how would you reckon that, or how would you, what would you perhaps recommend that the EC EC's approach is, should it wait for piecemeal litigation? Because these are 12 presidential candidates. Currently, we only have five. There are other seven out there. We can't really force them to bring their actions within a certain period. It's up to them to do so. But then we have a time crunch. Moving forward, what should the EC do? Should it perhaps reach out to the parties or allow it to happen in piecemeal, mindful of the time factor here? Let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. Um, the ruling by Justice Eric Cheba for, for me is victory for the rule of law and a clear indication of our collective commitment to the democratic journey that we have decided to embark upon. It is not victory for any particular individual. Mm. Indeed, I'm gratified that Park Hussein himself indicated that it is a victory for our democracy. Having said that, what has happened in terms of the ruling is that we are being told that the EC should afford Park Hussein the opportunity to correct his mistakes. Okay. It is not an automatic um, qualification. qualification to yeah. have him on the ballot. Now, coming to your question, that is why some of us advise the parties that have similar concerns, like that of Park Indum, to think about filing joint suits. Mm. If this were done, by now, all of them would have been beneficiaries of this uh, a judgment, fruit of the judgment. But here we are. Because they were not party to this suit, they can only wait for their turn or day in court. However, my candid advice to the EC is that they should look at candidates whose concerns are similar to that of Parkway's mm. Indo and call them mm. and afford them the second chance as the court has afforded P -P -P. the the second chance. I'm saying this because people have been disqualified variously based on different grounds. 
So you cannot possibly be calling the presidential candidate whose running mate was below 40 years to come to the party. In order that we do not jeopardize 7th December, that is my advice to the EC. Mm -hmm. Even though this ruling is coming from a high court and all the other cases are also in the high court, which means that this decision is not binding on those high courts because they have coordinate jurisdictions, nonetheless, nonetheless they are persuasive. Mm. Unless the EC, because the grounds upon which PPP went to court was breach of rules of natural justice. They were not afforded the opportunity to correct their mistakes. Unless the EC, and I'm hearing the EC saying that there are some of them were given the opportunity to correct their mistakes and they still came back with mistakes. On that score, maybe the EC. So those won't. are of a certain category. Then. Yeah, so those are a certain category. But those that the EC was not able to afford them the opportunity, as in the case of the PPP, I think that there's nothing defeatist when you call them and afford them the second chance. And I think that that's the best way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we go that way, we'll be able to, to limit. Work within the, yeah, but let me have. add that the EC2 has won cases on electoral disputes. Uh, let's not forget that PPP itself, three weeks ago, were in court asking for an injunction on a decision taken by the EC to impose certain mm -hmm. uh, 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 levies, right. what the, do you call fees, them? The, the fees. fees, yes, the nomination. And there, the EC, so you can but say it's one But the substantive matter is spending one. still. Yes, <laughs> it's one one for now, yes. <laughs> yes, but, uh, but, uh, okay, let me have a point then. Is he done? Yes, he's done. Okay. Um, I, I just want to make a point, which is that, you see, when you look at the ruling, I've read the ruling in full. Mm -hmm. When you look at, when you read the ruling, it will really appear that if the ruling was to be made to bite in full, then every other disqualified presidential candidate uh, will not even necessarily have to go to court mm. to get an opportunity to alter or amend its nomination forms before the Electoral Commission can make, a can make a determination as to whether or not to disqualify that presidential candidate. Because as you know, the grounds on which uh, Dr. Endum went to court, mm -hmm. the first ground was that the um, Electoral Commission breached a principle of natural justice, which right. is that the Electoral Commission did not give them a hearing. The second ground was that there was an error of law patent on the face of the record. The court dismissed the second ground but the court upheld the first ground and on that basis quashed the decision of the electoral commission to disqualify, to disqualify him and ordered the electoral commission to give him an opportunity pursuant to regulation 9 of CI 94 to correct, alter, or amend its nominations. Mm -hmm. You see, now, the, the, one of the main reasons why the electoral commission, uh, why the court held that the presidential candidate of the PPP ought to be given an opportunity to alter and amend its nomination forms is that the, the judge went uh, at great length in explaining the difference between nomination day and nomination period. period yes now you see when you look at the various provisions of the electoral laws there is mention of nomination day and nomination period and the judge held that the 29th and 30th days of um, October right September September which the electoral commission designated has been the days for people, for presidential hopefuls to file their nomination. nomination forms, constitute nomination days and not nomination period. Mm. And the judge actually held that it is within the nomination period that a person will have to be invited to correct or alter its nomination or, or alter his nomination forms. And therefore, and therefore, Dr. Papa Kusindum was denied an opportunity to correct his within nomination that within that period. And, and you see, the, that's the, the bombshell or the jugular, mm -hmm. is that the judge actually held that 
the Electoral Commission did not designate any nomination period at exactly. the first place. Exactly, and that is something we want to. No, you see what I'm saying? Because that so, is so, very so fundamental. If, yeah. if, if the once the court has held so that the Electoral Commission did not actually even designate a, a nomination, nomination period, period, it therefore presuppose that all these other presidential candidates will not possibly have been given an opportunity to amend their uh, nomination yeah, forms course. within the nomination period because there was no nomination period in the first place. So, how so do you count the time? That's why I initially said that the Electoral Commission ought to find an intelligent way of dealing with this matter. Now, uh, Mr. Jantua made a very important point, which is that, that if you take a, into account the, the ruling of the court in itself, it does not automatically reinstate Dr. Ndu. Not at all, yeah. It only gives him an opportunity to amend his nomination form. Thereafter, the Electoral Commission will have the discretion or the, or the mandate to determine whether or not he has met the requirements of the law, which is what the judge actually said. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think um, Mr. Maliba has made, has also made a very intelligent point, which is I think the Electoral Commission should pay attention to it. Perhaps, following this ruling, the Electoral Commission may then set the nomination period, invite the presidential candidates to amend whatever um, mistakes we or... Need to amend. They need to amend. And then the Electoral Commission takes a decision on that. You see, Abena, it's important that we make this point. The, even the question of altering or amending the nomination forms in itself will depend on the nature <laughs> of the ground on which a person was disqualified. Because the, the assumption is that there were just mistakes, clerical mistakes, accidental errors, or what have you. That's the assumption. Mm -hmm. But if it goes beyond just a mistake, and it's so grave that it cannot be altered, uh, an alteration or an amendment mm -hmm. will, not will, not save, will not save the, uh, the, 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 the will error. Not save the error. Well, these are matters that I believe the Electoral Commission can get. And over. that's what Mr. Maliba raised about some constitutional infractions, because you're looking at some presidential candidates whose um, ages there are way below yes. what the Constitution so, so the mandates. EC, so the clearly, EC itself the capacity find a issues way there. of dealing with this. Because okay. I don't see how the EC can win any of these suits in the High Court. Because don't forget, there's one High Court in Ghana. Yes, I mean. And that High Court has made this decision. So it will be very, it will take extraordinary circumstances for another branch of the same high court mm. to give a decision which which is contradictory to the decision that has been given to this high court. Supreme court. Very well. Yes. Now, Mr. the Jantra. point I wanted to make, and taking it from where mm -hmm. um, Abu okay. left off, it depends on the material error. So, <coughs> for instance, it, the EC is saying that uh, Dr. Indun's nomination uh, claiming the number of subscribers to his forms did not meet the requirements of regulation 72B of CI 94. Is that a material uh, 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 mistake to the law? Because he says, they said two people, one person signed mm -hmm. in two different areas mm -hmm. a signature. Mm -hmm. How do you now go and correct that signature if it is material to the law? Mm. Because so far as the EC is concerned, if you have so-called, in very common beginning goods, done a fraudulent act on your nomination form, how do you now go and correct that fraudulent act? But you see, on that, let me refer to, you see, the thing well, with maybe, seven maybe and you nine... Clarify that. Yes, let okay. Me <coughs> let me help you. See, you move a step further. The reason why you move a step further is that the court never even delved into this Exactly. Matters. The court never got into the merits or otherwise mm -hmm. of the disqualification. The court quash the decision on procedural impropriety, which is that the Electoral Commission did not follow the right procedure. They ought to have given Dr. Indum an opportunity. An opportunity. But the I mean, no, I, I get to you. Yes, but you, have gone, you have gone to the step, a step further to find, to find, uh, to quiz or to question how this ground of disqualification for Dr. Indum can be cured through an amendment or three. Is that the question yeah. you're asking? Yes. Let's leave it to the letter commissioner, Dr. Hindu. No, I think but that you the court mm -hmm. rightly indicated that when they make the amendments, they should come back to the EC for the, for the EC, EC to, to do a fresh determination. Right. Yeah, sure. So now, your concerns, whether such amendments will cure the can mistake. cure exactly. that type of mistake, exactly. will now be left to, to the, EC the EC when the EC has opportunity to have a fresh determination of the matter. Exactly. Yes. And I think that's because what Because the, the court couldn't have instructed the EC to, 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 to take back Indum mm -hmm. without going through its own processes. Uh, its own processes. Yeah. That would amount to interference. Yes. And I think that's why seven, Regulation 7 and Regulation 9 should be looked at 
separately because nine is giving you the processes that should be gone through before a decision as to disqualification or otherwise is taken. So indeed, there's a seven which gives you the requirements and everything, but then you need to still go by the nine, which is where the opportunity to be given by the EC comes in. But you see, <laughs> Abu, you raise a very important issue, which for me is a bigger issue, which perhaps, given the litany of suits, we perhaps have lost sight of, which is the nomination period. And clearly, the judge also mentioned it, like you said, stating categorically that the EC conspicuously, by, um, he says, but the nomination period as contemplated by Regulation 93 of CR 94 was conspicuously not set by the commission, which raises an issue about... But the judge dealt with it in his Yes, but, but let me, let's raise this issue here. The question is whether or not there has been the issuance of a writ of election, which in itself would have stipulated the nomination period. And for that, for, for purposes no, of this, let me read, yes. So it says here, and that's Regulation 4, that for the purpose of a public election, the commission shall issue a writ of election to the returning officer. And then two, the writ shall be as set out in Form 1 of the schedule and shall specify A, the period and place for the nomination of candidates, and B, the day on which the poll is to be taken, which shall in, it goes on and on and on. So the fundamental question is, mm. the process needs to be kick-started mm. started mm. through the rate of election. And from my checks, I don't know, but I, ha I stand to be corrected, but I've checked with the assembly president, or there seems not to be any such writ issued mm. or published in the National Gazette. So it raises a very fundamental question. Well, have we come this far for nothing? <laughs> It's a very important point you, you, you have made, and also a very important issue that you, you've tabled. I mean, I've never even averted my mind to this very, provision. Yes. I've, I've not, never even, I've not really even taken pains to look at CI-94 in detail, mm -hmm. let alone um, have a consideration of um, uh, these provisions yeah. for. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if the Electoral Commission hasn't, uh, it will be important for the Electoral Commission to take a critical look at that. Um, when it comes to matters of law and, and compliance with law, it, it requires a lot of diligence and it requires a lot of, um, you know, in taking, especially when it comes to matters of decisions which affect the rights of persons. Every administrative body has to be very circumspect in how they go about it. Uh, so it's important the Electoral Commission avert its mind to this, and if they haven't, they have to cure it. Now, and that's, why, that's a question I'm going to. How do we cure it? And how serious, perhaps we can start with that, how serious would the non-compliance with this regulation be to the whole process? Um, and then interestingly, to, it will appear that the, the provision sets out a manner in which it ought to be exactly. done. Exactly. Um, let's hope that it's been done. Um, let's hope that it's been done first of all, uh -huh. and, and if it's not been done, let's hope that it is something which can be cured um, easily, uh -huh. and it is something that the Electoral Commission can 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 deal with. You, you know, uh -huh. the, um, Dr. Dr. Indum. I, I mean, I when Dr. Indum stepped foot in court, I, I felt honestly that perhaps he could have been treated, for want of a better expression, quote unquote, a bit more fairly, um, because if you look at the ruling. The Electoral Commission actually makes a point that they, uh, in any event, they gave Dr. Indum an opportunity to meet the chairperson of the Electoral Commission after he had been disqualified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the judge was very categorical that what the law requires of the Electoral Commission is to grant the individual in question an opportunity to be heard before the, the disqualification. And the, this business of hearing, I mean, I'm surprised the Electoral Commission got this wrong on this occasion. That's why it I is, asked you how <laughs> could this have happened. It's, it's, a, it's quite surprising. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite surprising, but I'm saying that it, it's not it's something which is not possible. Right. It, it happens. Mm. Because the, quest, the business of hearing, especially when you are taking a decision which has adverse effects or which has adverse consequences on the rights of a person, mm -hmm. here is so fundamental. In fact, Justice Sowa once said that that requirement of the law to hear a party before you met out a uh, punishment or before you take a decision which will have an adverse consequence on the person, is so fundamental that even when God, even when God was going to punish Adam, he gave him a right <laughs> of hearing. He asked him, why did you eat the forbidden apple? Right. 
So I think the Electoral Commission itself has a very important responsibility to deal with this matter in a very intelligent, efficient way, in a manner that will, 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 will not have it uh, affect the calendar, the mm. electoral calendar, because as you know, if, if it does, it will, it, will, it, will, it will throw our country into a state that we all don't wish for. Very well. And speaking of time, uh, again, I go back to Regulation 4 here because there are time implications. You're talking about the fact that uh, the day on which it says the writ shall be as set out in Form 1 of the schedule and shall specify A, the period and place for the nomination of candidates, and B, the day on which the poll is to be taken, which shall one, in the case of a general election, not be less than 30 days or more than 90 days after the first day appointed for the nomination of candidates. We are 38 days away from the election. So clearly, so, this issue is Mr. So, Maliba. So we are jumping the gun, isn't it? So it has been stated that it should be not less than um, 30 days and not more than 90 days after the last day appointed for the nomination of and candidates. And here's the case, we don't even know whether the nomination... So, we how many days are we now? 38. Yeah, so there's still time to do it. It's just notice. But isn't and, that what kickstarts the process? And now we've moved ahead to the nominations, actually. And the EC has even taken decisions to disqualify 12. So my Let's, question is, mm -hmm. did we put the cart before the horse? Is and this, this very rate of election supposed to precede what the B is saying, specify the day on which the pool is to be taken, which shall mm -hmm. A. If that is it, well, is the rate supposed to be made public or it is supposed it's to... It's supposed to be published in the National Gazette, Gazette. So the public document. Yes, so have we done those checks? That's what I'm saying, I've checked. Have we found out from the EC? So we need to find out from the EC whether they have skipped this part of the rules and what are the legal implications exactly, for that. So point. I think that the, the EC wouldn't have to respond to this. I have not seen a rate of election anyway. Mm -hmm. I've seen notice of election okay. and I've seen uh, other ones being sent out, um, uh, asking people to indicate, to, to object to people who are going to be uh, agents or no pooling station agents to object to them if they think that the names are not those those people are aligned mm. so with this let's do further checks and find out whether this has been done very well mr i mr. think Jantua. for me the most important thing is that we meet the december 7th date that's the most important thing for me and if you know all these uh, challenges are going to um stop us from meeting that date, then we're in a grave situation mm. I hope that the Electoral Commission can work fast. I mean, I haven't really looked at this rate of election, but it seems that it's going to be a very uh, important and piece of the jigsaw. And I hope to God that indeed it's been done, because yes, otherwise... Yes, yes. It's an important piece of the jigsaw. So um, hopefully the EC can uh, accelerate all these challenges. Now, I'm not too sure, because I wasn't in town when the verdict of the uh, Nana Kunedu's party was given. Mm. And I'm not sure where that stands at the present moment, whether their are, situation, are back in court. yes, their situation are, yeah, is, yeah. On, court. is on the same line as uh, the PPP situation. So they are back in court. How long will it take? 38 days is a short period of time. Very, 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 very short period of time. Don't be surprised to get a directive from the EC next week or so, which will render all these actions moot. Well, that is why I'm but saying that, yes. let's hope they can accelerate it to make sure that we don't get into a situation where by December 7th, we are still going on with court. No, no, mm. don't worry. December seven will happen. Well, we, we all hope change the government. We all hope it happens. But the Ghanaian people can cannot wait for even one more day after well, December seven. Well, the legal procedures can stop that December no, seven. No, we will do all it. We, all it takes. We are very much aware of that. Yes, but I also think that, in terms of you know the 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 implications of the law and explaining the law to political parties, it should be done hopefully two years before, so that we understand <coughs> it better, so that the ordinary man also understands CI-94. Hire lawyers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who pay the lawyers? This, this, this is the public good that we are doing for Ghanaians to understand. In most countries that we, 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 we want to replicate and see how they do theirs, they make sure that the ordinary man can understand certain basic principles of the law that governs elections. 
And I think it's incumbent on the NCCE. It's incumbent on political parties. It's incumbent on everybody. Because not until elections, people don't even understand or decide to even look at what the CI-94 mm. contains. Yes. And I think it's important for us to be able to educate our people so that we don't run into these kinds of things near an election time. Mm. And perhaps the EC also definitely needs some yes. <laughs> education yes. on its own rules yes. and, and yes. regulations. Yes. yes. Let me take some messages from viewers and listeners at this point. Uh, this one says, if BPP had a point and was cleared, did it mean that the EC didn't do their work well by disqualifying them? Ghana is interesting. Another one is saying, this is Duviman in Kwame Chrome. Parker Sindum cannot win an election in Ghana as far as the two big parties are there. He should rather join forces with one of them. And Kayanduro in Kumasa says, the PPP should note that in case they come out with mistakes on the nomination forms again, they will not have any chance to correct it this time. Uh, Jumo from Sequa says, I knew it. I knew that <laughs> Mr. Malibu was going to defend the EC. However, the first time I have fallen in love with Mr. Malibu's submission is today. His advice to the EC is a good one. <laughs> Very well. And good morning, please. This uh, shows that the EC is not on their feet to run this election. They have to do their best to run this election. And this is from Philip Mensa in Tema Newtown. Uh, hi, Abna, and good morning. The argument that the court has no power to order the EC to execute its functions as dictated by the law was pedestrian and false. Just when some Ghanaians have argued that the ruling presents a good opportunity for the other candidates who, who are in court challenging their disqualification. I'm very happy that the law is on course, and I pledge the EC chair to go by the court's ruling. This is Inusa from SDA Hospital in Tamale. Um, another one says, you can be sure that the pseudo lawyers of the EC and their senior journalists will interpret the Supreme Court's ruling in their own way for them. It says nobody can order the EC knee. Um, well, good morning, Abna. There is nothing wrong with chiefs endorsing or engaging in partisan politics. Okay, so this one is preempting our conversation later in the day. I will come to that when we get there. So we'll take a look at that. Another one here is saying, I totally disagree with the judgment of the court. A voter subscribes to a presidential candidate in two different regions with the same name, same voter ID number, with different signatures, and we are to, to treat that as a mistake. No, from yes, I'll get to you, Abu. From my layman's point of view, that constitutes fraud and not a mistake. The EC's lawyer either did a poor job, or yet again, the court has slapped us in the face with another uh, says council judgment with implications for the future. This is Kofi Kelly and Hacho. Abu, you wanted to say something? No, no, I was just saying that the court didn't delve into those yeah. things. Exactly. It would be difficult to follow them. The, the exactly. They didn't delve into it. No, another one, and this is Sule in Tamale saying that I don't see this ruling to be a win for democracy. If anything, it's entrenching the culture of indiscipline and, imp and, imp and impunity. The courts are delivering this uh, denation of as uh, to jokers who do not know they are left from right. The so-called rule of law is what will plunge the country into the abyss of confusion. Let's beware of this. Uh, Sule, I, I, I totally disagree with this comment. You, you are entitled to it, but definitely we need to comply with the rules, and that's what the rule of law is all about. So we'll uh, be wrapping uh, up on this, yes. The, Mr. Maliba. When the ruling came out yesterday, mm -hmm. and the judge sought to distinguish between nomination day and nomination, nomination period, period. I was a bit unclear because I know very well that the candidates were asked to pick their forms on a certain day. Mm. I think somewhere 18th September, no, no, 8th September or so. Mm. That was earlier on, yes. Yeah, earlier on. They, 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 they were asked to pick that, mm. the, the, the forms around 8th or 9th, I stand for correction. And they were asked to submit on the 29th and 30th. So two days were set aside for the submission. The question one we want to ask is, from the, from the 8th September, when they picked the form, to 29th, couldn't that be regarded as the nomination period? But you see, that's the thing with the regulations. It needs you need to be couldn't specific. That, that's what it couldn't is. Couldn't that be seen mm -hmm. as a nomination period? Well, I think Abu has an answer. Now, unless yes, probably, when done. probably, if the court is saying that you did not expressly indicate that the day you pick the form to the 29th is the nomination period, mm -hmm. and then 
we are going to set aside two days for the nomination day, then I can agree with you because it is not expressly stated. Mm. But one can infer to see that once you pick the form, you on have, a certain date. You have a certain period. You have a certain period. Exactly. Very well. So let, let's read this from the judgment. I believe this is at page 22. It says, uh, what then was the time appointed by the second respondent as the day and period for the nomination of candidates in compliance with regulation 7 and 9 respectively? The only guide I have is exhibit DPKN1, captioned immediate release. And this is Thursday, September 8th, 2016 update on preparations for December 7 elections. And he says the relevant portion for now is the following. Quote, the Electoral Commission has briefed the political parties on its preparation so far towards conducting the 2016 elections. At the Interparty Advisory Committee meeting held on Thursday, September 8, 2016, the Commission advised as follows. The Commission will be accepting nominations from presidential and parliamentary candidates on 29th and 30th September 2016. So that's what it says. It said but there was when a day to there pick will the form. be. But then. How did they go to pick the form? They just uh, went uh, there. Very well, uh, yes. You know, um, it's, it's, it's difficult to save the electoral commission <laughs> when it comes to this nomination period and nomination day. Mm -hmm. The reason why it is difficult is that, uh, and the High Court judge did justice to that is that you have to look at you have to look at regulation 7 and you also have to look at regulation 9 now regulation 7 3 regulation 7 3 b okay regulation 7 3 b haven't given the requirements okay. for nomination and what you're supposed to provide regulation 7 3 b states that any of the persons specified under sub regulation 2 b between the hours of 9 in the morning and 12 noon in the hours of 2 and 5 in the afternoon on or before the nomination day. So nomination day is mentioned in regulation 7. seven. Then when you go to regulation 9. Now, hold it there. Can that time scale put there not be seen as a period? But which day no, was don't it? Worry, no, 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 don't worry. I'll, I'll answer you. Hold on. Then you go to regulation 9B. Regulation 9B says... The nomination paper is not subscribed to as required by law and shall give the candidate an opportunity to make amendments or any alteration necessary when within okay. the stipulated nomination period. Now, uh, Mr. Jantua, first point is that nomination day in um, regulation seven. seven and regulation period in nomination nine are two different animals. They cannot be the same animals because, at, of course, the judge did explain that too, that in construing a statute, you construe it as a whole, yeah. and where the lawmaker uses two different words, it's they it's definitely mean two different things. Because if the lawmaker intended that they mean the same thing, you will have used the same word. To the extent that the lawmaker used nomination Nobody day in regulation seven, okay. no, let me finish. Let me finish. No, 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 no. Yes, Mr. Man, but let him land it, then you come in. Let me finish. To the extent that the the lawmaker used nomination day in regulation seven and used nomination period in regulation nine, they are two different, different things. Yes. Two. One cannot say that the presidential candidates could have inferred that mm -hmm. 29th and 30th were nomination period. Or that can't we say that the time they picked the form, we cannot say any of those. The law says clear that stipulate it. It says within the stipulated nomination period. So the nomination period must be stipulated much the same and way that's that... that's why the rate of election comes, because that is where the stipulation you stipulate is supposed all of to that. be. Much the same way that uh, pursuant to Regulation 7, the nomination day was stipulated by the Electoral Commission. So, I mean, I don't know how one would take it, but mm. it is clearly very obvious that the Electoral Commission got it wrong on this occasion. Okay. But I'm not too sure why my friends in the NDC are very, you know, they're a little jittery about these okay. smaller parties okay. coming into the game. Okay. Let them come. Okay. 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 Yes, Mr. Chantra. Who is jittery? We are not jittery. Why do you have a problem with Dr. Indu Miran? I'm going to take away. Chip away one bit. Very well. It's okay. You want to change. We have a very nice discourse. Let's not get into the politics. We will be on our own. We are not jittery. We are not jittery. We are not jittery. We are not jittery. That's true. Is that what I'm saying? I'm saying. Let's, no, no, no. let's continue no, with this beautiful it's discourse. It's we'll get onto the political campaign. Well, we'll who, who, on on this panel, who on this panel praised the ruling? Uh, Mr. Using, uh, using the very very appropriate well. word we'll to the ruling. So what are you talking we'll about? Yes. I am the one who said that it is no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, 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 victory for a rule of law 
I said that it will yes, further indeed, our democracy. Said I said all those things. But I'm not doing legal analysis. That's I'm it. taking away my political. No, 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 no. Very well. I, I, He's taking his political cap off. He's taking yours off as well. Let's multi carry multi on. Yes, Mr. Jantwe is on the floor. Let all of them come on board. Mr. Jantwe is on the floor. Yes. If we go to nine two B, which Abu rightly quoted, it says, shall give the candidate an opportunity to make amendments or any alteration necessary within the stipulated nomination period. Yes. Yep. Mine isn't within the stipulated nomination period. Mine is alteration, uh, mm -hmm. amendments, or any alteration. Mm -hmm. If that amendment or alteration is fundamental to the law in terms of a fraudulent act that has no, that's a different matter. It's not a different matter. Is it, it all we'll get there. You are jumping the gun. I'm not jumping the gun. Let them give them it an opportunity. It is all part and parcel of it because. But that's if, the, for wait, the EC to determine. I'm not, I'm not wait. If the EC determines right. that that was a fraudulent act, do you know no, what no. is going to happen? Exactly. Which is why you know that you know that, you know that the EC has reported and yes. has complained to the police exactly. of some fraudulent acts. Yes. yes. This ruling is not going to take away those mm -mm. ones. Those ones will still be pursued. So, 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 uh -huh. so, so people should be aware. So those. So the point is that moving further, some of them can even be disqualified based, based on, on what happens exactly. at the criminal level. Exactly. Mine is that we should take that notion out of no, our no, mind no. that, that because, notion that because the judge has now uh, uh, made, this ruling. made this ruling that automatically Oh, no, 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 no. Because in some yeah. of the comments that are coming in, it looks as or if... Suggest, exactly. Yes. Okay, okay. No, okay. No, I know no, what you mean. Yes, Abu. Uh, it's important I come in. And by this, I'm not holding brief for Dr. Indum, or I'm not putting up a defense for him unnecessarily. But it's extremely important that we are fair to all the parties, including Dr. Indum. The person who is the nominee for the PPP is Dr. Papa Kusi Indu, mm -hmm. correct? We are not zeroing in on one individual. Which we are one? talking Can about... Please, yes. so yes. Let, about him let him land. No, yeah. no, let him there land. are cases, he raised the issue of fraud. We did, And yes. we are saying that these are criminal matters. Can That's we, true. These are within the purview of the security agencies. And That's true. Can we, but please Just, allow him to land. No, no, no. Please allow him to land. No, no. Please allow him to land. Yes, I'm going to land. It is obvious that the... Matt, the person we are discussing here, the subject matter of our discussion, is Dr. Papa Kosi. No, no, we've mm -hmm. talked about the other oh, candidates. No, 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 let him. Oh. We've talked about. Don't let Mr. him Manibar. posit his no, own no, no, no. Uh, uh, issues and then run with it. He's making you a submission. Know that, let him, you also let know him land and then we carry on. You also know that in this discussion, we have gone into other candidates. Exactly, so very, very true. Saying? But he's making a point. I don't know why he's taking her. So let him. Please carry on. No, no, allow him. We are taking on Dr. Kosi. No, please allow him. We are. Mr. Mr. In the light of disqualifications. Yes. And we have every right. But to allow go him, in and then you know where that he's taking us. Then you can come in, so, Mr. Maliba. Mr. Maliba yes. be a little tolerant. He, on yes, please carry on. Can he be tolerant? He, yeah, he, he, please carry on. Please carry on. You, you, number two, can you allow me to say what you think is not proper? You've said what you think. Can you allow me? Let's be a little tolerant. Abu, please carry on. Thank you. Now, the point I'm making is that Dr. is Dr. Indum's disqualification that we are discussing here. In any event, I'm not sure Mr. Janto is going to dispute this. The matters relating to the petition, the complaint to the Ghana Police Service relating to fraud relates to Dr. Indu, his nomination. It is his nomination that one Richard Aseda is supposed to have signed in the in voter, voter region, region and signed and yeah. which the Letter Commission thinks that raises issues of fraud mm -hmm. and therefore have petition, has petitioned the Ghana Police Service. I am saying that fraud is a very weighty uh, offense. It's a very serious offense. Mm -hmm. Fraud. It's a very serious offense. I don't know who the suspects are in the Ghana Police Services investigations, whether it's Dr. Indum or Mr. Aseda or both Dr. Indum and Mr. Aseda. So I say that fraud is extremely a serious charge to level at a man and no mean a man than Dr. Papa Kosindu. And therefore, in discussing it, we have to be cautious in how we approach it. That's one. Two. The only body that can establish fraud and say categorically that fraud has been committed is the court. Mm -hmm. No, not the Electoral Commission, not the Ghana Police Service. The Electoral Commission has no mandate to make a determination that an individual has committed fraud. But, Neither, isn't, isn't but they have reported that they are working on isn't it. Isn't it based on their regulations and laws that govern them for them to determine whether a candidate has, has been fraudulent in 
the way the application. No, no, but the point no, is, they don't have that mandate. No, they so have. No. They suspect something. They, they forwarded it's, 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 it to. No. But they can't make they, a determination. Yes, it's a criminal. No, they go or a criminal. To, yes. They go according to their rules and regulations. No, 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 no. Let's let's be fair to Dr. Ndumi here. Listen. The reason we are not why, saying no, we are not saying no, no, no. we are going let by what let, let, let me give you a response. Let me just let him let not give you a response. Please be wrapping up and let us carry on. Let me give you a response. Please be wrapping up. Abner, the reason why, Mr. Gentle, the reason why Dr. Indum was disqualified, the grounds for his disqualification is not fraud. The grounds for Dr. Indum's disqualification is that one man subscribed yeah, for yeah. him yes. in two jurisdictions. And the regulations of the elect uh, the law requires that it's two persons register, uh, subscribe, gives you uh, two subscribers in, in each district. And so, Mr. Asada, let's the answer commission, the answer commission was to grant that Mr. Short Mr. Short As Asada was, was it's straight, not fraud. It's because one man has signed for him in two districts, mm -hmm. therefore, he's falling short of one the subscriber. subscriber. In the so, he the, didn't meet that. that. Regulation, Hold on, does their regulation, easy regulation, agree for that to happen? And if it happens. How is it misinterpreted? I, I'll give you the answer. So the first thing I want you to understand is that the Electoral Commission did not disqualify Dr. Hindu because he had perpetrated from no. The Electoral Commission disqualified him because he's supposed to have not had one subscriber. For, for short uh -huh. of one yes. subscriber. The Electoral Commission has no mandate to determine from. The police does it. It's the court. Three. Let me, because we are taking us into the second leg, let me just tell you how this can be cured. Assuming Dr. Hindu is invited, Per regulation nine, Dr. Indum can either alt alter or alteration or amend. Is that not the case? So Dr. Indum can allow Mr. Asides signature to stand for one district. And he can amend his form to add one more subscriber. He can alter his form to add one more subscriber. Indeed, Dr. Indum can even amend his form or alter it to cancel Mr. Asida completely and, and bring two persons to, to join. So in terms of how Dr. Indum amend his forms or alter it to... I didn't want to get into that. I, I, yes, I said I that. Let's go. Then, 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 as to how the letter commission and the uh, Dr. Endum are going to deal with this particular mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. order of the court, we will leave it to, to the, the letter commission and Dr. Endum. But I'm saying to you that Dr. Endum can amend, he can alter it, yeah. and add another subscriber, or add two more Choose subscribers. Fresh, yes, very Don't, well. Uh, it will appear to me clear <laughs> Let me that Dr. Endum and Anna Kunedu are going to be on this ballot. <laughs> very well. <laughs> let's, let's, yes, let's, Mr. Let's, Jantua. Then let's, 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 that, that, Mr. Jantua and then Mr. Maliba. Then it goes to show that the Electoral Commission had interpreted this misdemeanor, if we can call it a misdemeanor, mm -hmm. of the same person signing at two places. If Dr. Endo could alter and amend according to their regulations, but they then see the act as something different, then they were not supposed to disqualify. No. I mean, no, well, so that is what him on the basis of fraud. Yes. No, 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 you, no you're not, I'm not saying that. Saying he's not, he's just saying that there wasn't the basis. Yes, yes Mr. Maliba. That's what the court has called you, Mr. Maliba. There were some people whose actions bordered on fraud. Yeah, criminal. Now, we didn't zero in on Paco syndrome. He was raising that. Can Can you be allowed to amend and correct your fraudulent acts? That was his question. And I said that, no, those are matters left to the criminal justice system. And that this ruling is not going she's to not going, cure going to that. those criminal justice matters. If you have been cited for fraud, you will still go there and answer. That's what I said. Nobody, but, but, nobody but, talked but, about but, 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 my, my, but the whole process but starts with the EC giving the PPP presidential candidate the opportunity to amend or alter That's as fine. necessary. That's fine. So, so That's if fine. that is the case, why would the EC use this as a criteria to disqualify Papa Kassindu? Well, if they well, that's why it's been wait, that's why it's been wait, 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 I know, but if if they don't see it as a fraudulent act, you better come to begin and close. Ah well, that's yet to be no, determined. It's, it's, cannot, with the, it's with the police. The EC so cannot see determine that act as a fraudulent act because they have no such mandate. They can suspect fraud and complain to the police. The police can which investigate. Is, is hold on, hold on. The police can investigate, and if the police finds enough evidence, they will go and mount a prosecution in court. It is the court that can make a determination whether or not a man is fraudulent. Let me take some no, messages. Let me take some messages from viewers and listeners. This one says, "Good morning, Abna. Um, 
My advice to the EC and other parties is that next time when the forms are issued uh, to the contesting parties, the EC should organize training on how to fill the forms to avoid delays. Um, another one says, you matter all sorts of, no matter all sorts of criticism against the EC, I will stand by this outstanding decision. And this is Solomon in Banon. I hope I didn't massacre that, the I word. The, the EC decision or the court decision? I guess it's, the, it's definitely the court decision. I want to believe so. Please, the man, uh, okay, no, I'm not going to read that. We in the New Patriotic Party have uh, predicted a power crisis and the return of load shedding. We'll be looking at that subsequently, so when we get there, I will definitely read this. Another one says, a nation that will not feed its many who are poor and desperate cannot protect its few who are enjoying its vast resources through corruption and nepotism. Um, from Mr. Al Hassan Atongo, he says, why are we sometimes unfair? Let all the candidates come on board, correct the mistakes uh, correctable mistakes should not prevent them from their political right. This one says, great program. Anyway, uh, Mr. Mr. Charlotte say a lawyer ignored a very 101 legal maxim called or the alterum partum, which simply means give the other person or the accused person a fair hearing. Yeah. This law can be found in Deuteronomy 1 verse 16, where God, knowing very well of Adam and Eve's fornication, he still gave them a fair hearing before punishing them. And this is what is taught in first semester first year in any law school. So what is wrong with the EC? This is giving a bad name to the EC and a possible electoral insecurity. Now this is from Space Okoklote in Odododio constituency. Thanks for your messages so far. You're watching and listening to New Day Saturday edition coming to you live on TV3 here in Accra, also live on 3FM 92.7. We're also live on Connect 97.1 FM in Takra Day, and we're streaming live at 3news.com. I'll take some messages, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, this one, Santam from Boko says, I think the EC could have prevented all these legal issues if they had given parties time to go and amend their forms. Over 400 names and signatures, it needs more scrutinizing. And yes, uh, that's Saddam from Boko. The continuous lawsuit against the EC coupled with the continuous losses is an indication that the current EC has a lot to learn. It's about time they uh, bury their egos and learn more. This is Frimpong in Achimota. Uh, Brakofi in Yeji says, EC board should be careful with her decisions because it can mar this country. Uh, another one says, uh, the press conference held by the NPP didn't give any solution. They only said there will be doom so in 2017. They should come again and don't make doom predictions without solutions. This is O'Neill, Isaac, and Boko. Um, Yabwati in Lashibi says the EC must not draw hasty conclusions, but should dialogue more and exhaust all available internal mechanisms to resolve grievances of parties. The court must be the last resort. Um, good morning, Abna. I'm enjoying your show and the caliber of luminaries on your panel, especially when Mr. Maliba is in his calm self. Please let him remain that composed to the end of the program so we can enjoy it more because <laughs> 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 they're saying he's fond of uh, distracting it. programs and this uh, overly and this propaganda. Okay, yeah. With regards to the ruling, I think the EC can save us time and money by sitting down with the parties and solve this problem. All we need is change. Change is coming to Volta region. And this is uh, from Jifa in Ho Central. Last one says, Abna, the EC should be very careful of its rulings because this coming election is the heart and mind of Ghanaians. We'll put a hold on to the messages then move on to topic number two for today, which is the NPP press conference during the week. Now, the NPP held a press conference and a number of issues were put out there, but we'll be looking at perhaps two of them the issue about the Chinese Development Bank loan, and then, of course, their prediction that Dumso will return in 2017. So we'll start off the discussion with the Chinese Development Bank loan, and I will start with Mr. Hamaliba. Where are we with the CDB? Perhaps that could be our start point. That CDB loan. That cannot be the start point. The start point is what do I make of the NPP press conference and the issues there? Definitely, they're, I knew you would mention they're, that, they're, but they're yes. Upon. The NPP, knowing that they have lost the Dumso debate, you know, for close to one year now, we've been able to stabilize 
doing so, yeah. with the exception of some four weeks where there was some force majeure and uh, Sahara could not uh, uh, lift for crude. So largely, we'll be able to stabilize Dunso. It was going to be one of their key campaign messages to the people of this country. We have shattered that one. Having pulled the carpet off their feet, they are now dazed. So what they are good at is what they have gone to take which is lies and creating fear in the people so that they can vote for them. Number one, first lie in their, in their press conference, that Dumso will return because next year, the FPSO, Kwame Nkrumah, will be shut down for repairs work for a period of six months. And that that is connected to the Jubilee Fields because FP also Kwame Kuma works in the Jubilee Fields. Little did they know that through the efforts of the president, John Draman Mahama, another new field has been discovered called the 10 field, which has started producing oil and gas is coming on stream next year. So let's assume, without admitting, that FPO, so Kwame Nkrumah, or the, uh, the, the Jubilee field will be shut down. What we simply do is to go to the 10 fields. And FPO, so Professor Mills is there doing his work. So will Dumso come back in 2017 because of the shutdown of the Jubilee Fields or if you want the FPSO going for, 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 for maintenance, maintenance works. the answer is no because all we need to do is to substitute. And as I speak to you, there's going to be gas coming from the Sankofa Fields. So we have put in place mechanisms that will make this country sufficient self-sufficient in terms of energy. Where is this press conference and lie coming from? Just to create fear in the people, so that the people will see that they are the uh, ones who can salvage this nation. We are already doing it, and it will continue. The second lie, which has to do with we mortgaging I will come to that. I, was, I wanted us to start with this, that one, but you chose to start with the Doomsaw. So let's finish with Doomsaw yeah, so, because I don't want us to... So when you look at the, the various uh, 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 systems we've put in place so that we don't revert to Doomsaw situation, you know that a second car power plant is coming. He's in the energy sector, so he knows. A second car power plant is coming. This will augment what we have. And so you look at what they are saying, and then you look at measures put in place by this government to ensure that Dumso become the thing of the past. The two are incongruous. They are not related. There's no iota of truth that will go back to Dumso in 2017. Take it into consideration that things are upset. If it's about an FPFSO being shut down, there's a second one. If it's about not getting enough, I'm saying that car power is coming. A second one is coming. I was just doing my checks to find out whether it has even come. <laughs> so Ghanaians should know that having lost the debate, they will now want to create fear in people so that the people can repose their confidence in them. But we will continue to explain to the people of this country that these are lies and we have exposed them. Yeah. Very well. I'll come to you, Abu Bada. Let me take Mr. Jansu's position on this issue. The proof, Doomso. The proof of the pudding, Prediction of Dumso in 2017. The proof of the pudding is it's in, in the, the eating. eating. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. My actual concern is not where we are today because it looks as if government has been able to stabilize power. However, 
what are the the plan B's we are putting in place, if I'm to use that phrase. Mm -hmm. What are the plan B's we are putting in place in case there is a equivalent challenge with FPSO, uh, 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 no, uh, 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 ah, right. What are we putting in place in case we cannot provide gas to those generation um, uh, sets that need gas. What kind of preparations are we put in place for a major challenge for any of the generation uh, plants in Abwazi? Do we have the work with all in terms of resources mm -hmm. to be able to buy any crude or to store crude as standby if it so happens mm -hmm that we fall into the kind of situation we fell into not long ago. What is the state of Akosombo at this point? I heard the minister indicate that we can use the six turbines today, but we are only using three. I think what Ghanaians are looking for is for the government to be able to tell us that we have secured X, we have secured Y, in case any malfunction happens in any of the generation units, we still would be able to provide power and electricity. Now, I don't know what the MPP were basing their argument on with mm -hmm. regards to Dumso returning in 2017. If they were basing their argument on FPSO Kwame Nkrumah not being around, mm -hmm. then let's look at whether FPSO are Tamils can do and can doing. provide what FPS Okwami Nkrumah was doing. I'm not sure. Probably uh, 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 Honorable Amaleba will tell me whether we have now linked the 10 project into Etwabo. If we haven't linked the 10 project into Etwabo, how is Etwabo going to get the gas to be able to fire when uh, uh, FPS Okwami Nkrumah is not producing gas? But let's see, it might happen that we will sort out our problems with the Nigerians. And if so, it happens, then we are likely to get gas flowing through the West African gas pipeline. I would want to know what the situation is now with the reverse flow uh, pipeline we were building onshore. So that if it so happens that Tema, Asogli, need gas, we can do that reverse flow because the gas for Asogle is coming directly from Nigeria mm. and Nigeria. And Asogle is quite a material and fundamental uh, generation unit within the mix of... And it's currently not working because not, of the end yes, gas situation. Yes, it's currently not working because of the end gas situation. So for now, we have electricity. For now, everything seems to be okay. What, and the contingency. What, yes, what kicks the government off its, its pedestal is when all of a sudden something happens and they have not prepared for it. So I hope they have put that in place so that in case anything happens between now and election date, I won't say 2017 because we don't know who is coming in 2017. Mm. The Ghanaian people will decide which party they would want to come in 2017. Yeah, this, and I hope it will be my party. <laughs> so, so I am looking at it between now and election mm. period. So we have light now. And, and you see, it is not a privilege. No political party should come into power and think that providing electricity is a privilege. It's a right. Right. Good. You mentioned two things I want to pick up on here. Uh, the minister talking about the fact that, yes, Akosombo is working. We can have all six turbines work, but we're currently working with three. I want to know why. Isn't it cheaper to use hydro? Well, he didn't, he didn't go into detail as, as to why, why we are using three. Maybe we are using three. Maybe they need maintenance and they are maintaining it. He didn't go so into detail. So it's not detail. like they are ready to be used, but we are not using them yeah, well, for he whatever said, reason. He said it could be used, mm -hmm. but we are using three at the moment. Maybe because we seem to have overcapacity, we are satisfied with what we have now. But, that, but that's the point. Overcapacity from other sources, which yes, are more sources, costly. Yes. Well, I'm not sure Because if you're looking at... And Amaliba will be able to tell me mm -hmm. because he's a board member of GMPC. Whether we are still using crude, yes, whether we are still using crude 
for the aboise uh, plants because mm -hmm. if you're still using crude then that is an expensive mm -hmm. way of doing it mm -hmm. um i'm not sure where bui is today it's a picking plant anyway so i hope we would keep it as a picking plant mm -hmm. and nothing more mm -hmm. but for me we need to be able to make sure that we do not go into this doom so doom so situation again yep. let's be let's be honest it affected all of us Actually. and i hope that we would not play politics with it to a stage where it becomes difficult for us to all sit down and find solutions to a challenge if it happens again. Yes, and then another thing you mentioned had to do with the end gas situation, which clearly has to do with finances. Yes. And, 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 and yes. that remains, it remains a, a, huge, a huge challenge. Exactly, huge moving challenge. forward. Yes. You're talking about contingencies yes. and all of that. And all that we is can't pretty good overlook on, that. On, on finance. Exactly. So, how do we get that out? Um, I will come to you, Abu, because well, you, well, definitely well, this well. whole thing emanated from the press conference. I'll come there. But I just want Mr. Maliba to answer this. The, the, the issue about why three turbines in Akosombo working and not six, is it that? The extra three are not in a, in a shape that could be the working water, or the, it's for strategic The reasons water level what? now is appreciable. And that's why he said that we could work with it. But it is important to also have a reserve so that in times that maybe one of these things that he's talking about is knocked out, we can rely on. It's just a strategy to ensure that we don't deplete the water there. He talked about um, the reverse flow from the, to the, to, to, to the east, from the west to the east. Yes, the, there are pipelines now being um, put so that you can have a reverse flow to to the eastern. That's a, a solar power yeah. plant. If we are able to do that, work is ongoing. If we are able to do that, we will not need the end gas. Don't forget that end gas has actually never served as well. Even times when we are we are we are um, what in, is in it the, in the black. <laughs> no, even times when we are we pay our <laughs> no we are regular with our payments. Yes, uh -huh. in the black with them, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So even when we are regular with our payments, we don't get the amount of gas that we need because clearly you can't be asking Nigeria to be giving you enough gas when they themselves need the gas. So um, end gas uh, or the West African pipeline is no longer an, uh, 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 one of the things that as a government we even consider because we think that we want to be self-sufficient from that, that system. That system does not serve us well. So currently we are stable. And but our stability is not necessarily everything is not necessarily internally generated. We, we, we are relying to some extent on Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire also buy from us. That's why it is not for nothing that we have interconnected our systems. Mm -hmm. We envisage this. That because Côte d'Ivoire largely depends on hydro, uh, they are, this thing, their tariffs are cheap. So if in times of need, if we can buy it from them, it will be cheaper because they are using hydro. And don't forget that Côte d'Ivoire the extension of connectivity is not as much as we have. Côte d'Ivoire is doing like 49%, uh, it's not even up to 50% of, of the entire country. And then, I mean connectivity in Côte d'Ivoire. So they have some amount left that we can also buy from. Mm -hmm. Ghana, you know, we are the second when it comes to connectivity in the whole of Africa. And so we have more to spend in terms of energy. We, we're looking for more energy. So. Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, yes, we buy from them, they buy from us. And we even export to Togo and Benin. So this is something that the four countries have arranged. And it is nothing new or it is not an abomination to be heard saying that, yeah, we have bought uh, energy from Côte d'Ivoire. They also buy from us in times of needs. Mm -hmm. Abner, yes, yes, before Abu comes, yes. I think okay. we shouldn't uh, uh, rubbish the fact that you have the West African gas pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yes, and gas in Nigeria might not be putting gas through. However, when you look at the gas fields that Ghana has at the present moment, we can do a reverse flow through the West African gas pipeline mm. to Togo and Benin. And I think if that is possible, we should start discussing it now because it will earn foreign exchange for us or to earn money for us to be able to invest into our own mix. Mm. So we shouldn't rubbish the fact that it's only a one-way flow. That pipeline, which Ghana also spent money in, could not be left to waste. Exactly. So looking at the Tano Basin, where there are huge deposits of gas, looking at the Sopon Basin, where there are huge deposits of gas, 
whatever legal uh, uh, agreements we should put in place, we should start doing it now. Because where Ghana is concerned, from my uh, uh, knowledge of the industry, we seem to have more gas than oil. And we should be able to use that gas productively to earn foreign exchange and earn money to reinvest mm -hmm. into the the, 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 the the power sector. Very well. Yes, Abu, so <coughs> what was the basis of this prediction of doom mm. in yeah, um, 2017? Well, thank you very mm. much. And um, a lot of issues have been raised. And therefore, I would like to deal with them one after the other. The first issue which um, has been raised was at the instance of my friend, Mr. Amaliba, who said uh, to the effect that the reason why the MPP held this press conference and its words told lies is because the MPP were hoping to use Dumso as a campaign uh, tool, which they have, again in his words, which they have pulled the carpet under the MPP. I mean, I want to deal with that issue because it's a very important matter. Well, first of all, Mr. Maliba and the NDC, matters of our energy needs, the energy needs of our country, Mr. Jantua did allude to it, are not political matters. I mean, this statement that is made, the president himself has made that statement before, that by the time we will go into the elections, doom so will be over, and therefore MPP will not have a campaign message. I mean, uh, with the greatest of respect, I mean, uh, doom so power needs, power crisis, power energy mix and the rest, they are not political matters. They are not matters of campaign or otherwise. We are talking about a country which has power requirements, which has power needs, energy needs. And we are talking about how to meet those demands. And as you know, no economy can develop without the requisite power provision. You cannot build your economy if you don't have a mechanism to provide power for the economy. You cannot. And so it, it's, it's a very disturbing notion for people to propagate. And then DC keeps talking about it. The MPP cannot use Dumso as a campaign again. And Dumso is not a, a campaign matter. And if you want to appreciate why Dumso is not a campaign matter, Abna, if you want to appreciate why Dumso is not a campaign matter, ISA, ISA, I S S E R, Institute of uh, Statistical and ISA, ISA has actually said that Dumso cost us. Two billion, some two billion Ghana cities every year for the past four years. And don't forget, Ghana has gone through energy crisis and doom so for four years. So if every year where the Ghanaian economy loses two billion Ghana cities or so, as a result of doom so, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Coca-Cola laid about a thousand or so people off. A lot of people, small scale industries, have had to fold up. Carpenters, welders, Masons and the rest have had to fold up. Tailors and the rest, same stress. Um, hairdressers have had to fold up as a result of doing so. Look, even as a result of doing so, people lost their lives in this country in the past four years. Hospitals and all of that. So don't let nobody come to tell us doom so energy situation is stable and therefore MPP has no message and we've done well. Chief, look, uh, uh, look, and may I speak to these matters with a very heavy heart? And yesterday, and it's, it's, it's a very good point to make. Yesterday, Nana Kufado was in the Volta region, and he paid the Ketese call on Togbe Afede. To illustrate this point, this notion that these our friends have, that you can subject the people through doing so for four years. At one point in time, lights go off 24 hours. You get lights for 12 hours, and then you, you lose power for 24 hours. You subject the people through doing so for four good years unprecedented in the history of this country. There's never been a situation in our country where we have had to go through doom so for four years. We have endured it in this country. The notion, Abena, that you can do that, people will lose their jobs, people will lose money and the rest. And when you stabilize it for, in its words, one year, it's just uh, some four weeks that uh, force majeure and the rest. And then you think that, excuse my language, with the greatest of respect, the people are so dumb <coughs> that they will suddenly just forget that they went through doing so for four years. Togbe Afede, Togbe Afede gave a wise, profound statement. And for those who don't know Togbe Afede, Togbe Afede is uh, one of the leading prominent chiefs in our country. 
In fact, he's a president of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs. Indeed, he's a candidate for the presidency of the National House of Chiefs, a colossus of a chief. Listen to what he said, and I'm quoting him. Because he's a chief, I don't want to put words in his mouth. I'm quoting him. He said, quote, The Volta region is not the loyal housewife whose husband only come home when he's angry. End quote. I repeat, the voter regime is not the loyal housewife whose husband only come home when he's hungry. End quote. So, look, Zamar, I don't think that you can put people through doom so. And interesting, you're a member of a, you're a, member of okay, a board so of one I of the energy institutions. You can put people that, through yes. doom so. And then, in the end, you come back to tell us. But that's the thing. He needs to retract So, you've, you've responded that's to that. Incredible. Now, let's move on. The press conference. Now, let, let me get to the press conference. in 2017. On what? what what's what, your basis you, for this? Look, where is it? Even the, before I even get to the basis, these people have told us Doomso will end on million occasions. They never meet the deadline. They never meet their promise. You remember September 2013, the president said in the first year of his first term, Doomso will be a thing of the past. Doomso, therefore, ought to have been a thing of the past December 2013. We've had promises upon promises, even this year. Mr. Abut, we are not trying no. to make this political. Just like your previous statement, it's very true. It's not a... We shouldn't politicize it. It's a very important thing. Yes. So all there of that has been said. Abra, yes, but we're moving absolutely on. Absolutely nothing political about that statement. When you want to know a, that a government can provide you with something, the first thing you should be looking out for is trust. And I'm establishing the fact, I'm giving the basis to, to, to the Ghanaian people that these people are not trustworthy. Even today, lies go off. Today, the lies keep going, going off. They still will not come out to tell us what it is. They will come and say, fault here, fault there. The truth of the matter is, there are two main reasons why Dumso will return under this government. God forbid, if they were to win December 7th, in the most unlikely event that they win December 7th, Dumso will return. Two reasons. In fact, three, actually. The first I've already alluded to, which is the trustworthiness. They are not trustworthy. They give deadlines and they breach them. Two, they listen to him. When the MPP says FPO so is going to undergo repairs for six months, he says, what makes us think that they can't put in place other arrangements for uh, what makes us think that they can't put in place other arrangements for uh, 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 another Substitute. another field for, for, for them to take gas from it. He should tell us categorically the plans they have put in place to ensure that when the FPSO undergoes repairs for six months, we will have contingency. Made. That is what Mr. Jantua is asking for. And that is what is required of prudent planners. A prudent government puts in place concrete measures. You don't speculate that we may do this, we may not do that. But even more important, the reason why Dumso will return under them is that under them, the economy is broke. And then Mr. Jan alluded to that. You asked questions to that effect too. One of the main reasons, if not the only reason, one of the main reasons why we have undergone Dumso and Dumso has been an issue under this government is money. My sister, that's what it is. It's money. Bottom line, it's always been money. Our generating capacity, the experts have said, to a very large extent, can meet our demand. The issue has had to do with where to find the way with all the money to provide the energy, the crude oil, the gas, to power the generating plants. That has always been the issue. And indeed, a government official has, had, has considered on that recently that the issue of money is a problem for this government when it comes to energy generation. Money is a problem. Look, and if you want to understand why money is a problem? Well, the economy is going at three percent. The economy is is on its knees. The economy is how to go for an IMF bailout. We've gone to have to go and look for rescue. So, and indeed, Togo Afede did make that point yesterday too. Has been the first Ghanaian businessman to have put in place a private power generating plant. That is correct, isn't it? A private power generating plant. And he said, until he did that, most people did not think that a private entity could do that. He did that under the MPP. The Asogli plant. The Asogli plant, in the words of Tobi Afede, has been shut down for the past six or so months because they can't get gas. Because government of Ghana owes and gas. And there's been countless occasions where the Nigerians have declined to provide us gas because we, did, we don't have money. Oh, Instead up. of us looking at how to put in place measures and mechanisms to resolve the concrete problems confronting our country, particularly the energy sector, which has had a debilitating effect and had a, a major adverse effect on the Ghanaian people, our economy, our livelihoods, our incomes and everything. Every now and again, you hear the president, you hear government officials 
politicizing and making everything a campaign matter, if indeed it was supposed to be a campaign ma matter, I don't think that the Ghanaian people ought to even give you any consideration at all. Because you've subjected them to do so for four years. Four good years. And you now come and sit there and say, because the light is on for some six months, we should forget about everything. We don't have short memories like that. Very well. I will move no. back to... Yes, Mr. Manba, you want yeah, to say something. Yeah. But you respond and then I will ask. Yeah. There are some few points. Right. You asked him, I think that was the third time you asked him the question, what is the basis for the allegation? He kept dodging and dodging and dodging. You see, what did they do under their turn when Dumso visited us under the Kufu administration? They assembled pastors to go and pray and touch the Akosombo walls, the dam, for water to come. That is their, their competence. Their competence to go and pray and touch the, 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 dam, the, the walls of the dam. He talks about Fede, Togo Fede. The man spoke in parables. And if you don't know that he was referring to you people standing before him, then you are lost. The man says that um, the Volta region is not a, a wife whose husband only comes home when he's hungry. <laughs> you know the number of times. You know, you know the number of times. You know the number of times the president has been there. The last count, 15 times. 16 times. Who visits there only when there's election? Who? Tell me. Who visits there when there's election? When the man was insulting you right in your face, you don't know. I'll tell you. He talks about lies off. He talks about lies off. That still lies go off. He doesn't even know the difference between doom so and lies going off. Since the days of Diago de Azambuja, through to God in God's back, to Nkrumah, lies go off, my brother. Mm. What is mm? <laughs> You don't know where lies go off. <laughs> you don't know where lies go off in this country. The man is a board member. Look at him. Look at him. He doesn't even know that. He doesn't even know that. He doesn't even know there can be some some touching, eh? And then the 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 the, the area. What is the name of that transformer will blow? He doesn't even know that. Me do, me do. He doesn't even know that. He doesn't know that. Which day in this country? Which year in this country? Under which government? That when we got up, as you grew to your to this your age, lies never went off. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about lack of generation and that we, are, we have a shortfall in generation. That is doom so and not lights going off. Why? Wouldn't they put lights off to connect new houses in your area? If they want to, if somebody built a new house and they want to connect to the national grid, wouldn't they put the lights off there? What are you talking about? You see, for me, I have come to one firm conclusion that the MPP know very well that when it comes to the doom so matter, they have lost it. And because they have lost it, they now want to put fear in people. Why? The minister, the minister of power yesterday sent out a statement in reaction to them. I don't know where you had it. Which stated clearly that the FP also Professor Mills at, a, at a, the temples can do the work that FPSO Kwame Nkrumah is doing at the Jubilee Field. They sent a statement coming from your brother's end. I'm happy you said that you were not seized with the facts. So that is why you are moving from here and here and you are in your success and service. But the situation is very clear that we have sustained the energy situation till this point and this government is not going to deliberately send the country back to do so. Because when that happens, John Mahomes' grandfather is also going to be in do so. John Mahomes' auntie will be in do so. As he said, it affects everybody. So it is the intention of this government to move us away. And I've told you what we have done. Sure. I mean, I've definitely, told you, de I've no, told no, you the things we have done. No, no. I've told you the things we have done. Definitely, yes. And I'm telling you that uh, ENI, ENI is bringing on board more gas from the Sankofa fields. So what is he talking about? So I think that the people of Ghana know who is speaking the truth and who is lying. But yes, I mean, I definitely, I, I will come to you.
Definitely, yes. We, I don't think any government would deliberately send its nation into darkness like that. But, and that's why we're talking about the contingencies, and that's what Mr. Jantua exactly. hammered on. I what I, yes. I, I, I've told you the plans. I'm, 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 I'm stating my premise okay. for a question, so please allow me. So I'm just saying, it has implications in terms of finances and all of that, you know, accruing more costs and other issues. So I'm just asking this question. You know, we have a number of power badges. And gas closed valve. We are not getting gas. So all this while, what has been happening to those barges? Because no, we, we, we have we know our own gas. The leases that we we have our own gas. The natural gas is turned into lean gas, and we we consume that. We consume it. That's why we are where we are with the stability. And it's, so it's, you're, you're saying we, it's operating at its optimum. Which one? The power the the, 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 the the power barges. That's why we are we are we are we are stable. The gas, the local gas that we have. And I'm happy he is in that area. It's consumed locally. We turn it into lean gas, and we feed our plants. That's what we do. I'm gonna, yeah, yes, just a second. Sir. You know, um, the, the propaganda can do that when you get obsessed with propaganda. It, it, it happens. So when, and thankfully, Mr. Jantua is here. He can help us with the facts. Thankfully, the two political parties have had to grapple with them. So when the MPP had the energy crisis sometime, I think, in 2006 or 2007. It took the New Patriotic Party some one year, two months or so, to resolve the energy crisis. The resolution of that energy crisis um, was born out of imp importation of emergency power plants and the rest, so much so that Dr. Wekubebe even made some comments about it. We all, we all know about it in Ghana. So the MPP took concrete steps and measures to implement policies to resolve the energy crisis of 2006 2007 in a record one year three months or so the ndc and mr malaba and co um, and i refer to him because he's a board member of gmpc so he's part of the people who deal with these matters it's taking you four years four years Dumso started sometime january 2012 or so four years to resolve to have some resolution of doom so some resolution now, finally, I've been asked that we can do other things. Because he put Togwe Afede in issue. Hmm. Well, I mean, you, 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 you put him in issue. issue. Oh. You put listening. him in issue first. Are the first listening? No, no, no. I am the one who put Togwe Afede in issue. Can I finish? Can you imagine? Can I finish? Because the three of us are Because the three of us are lawyers, because the three of us are lawyers, we may have to be a little more patient, patient for, me for me to finish Offer. there are for some allegations they must be responded immediately oh, oh, Mr. Malba, yes. Why are you I mean, there are some, I there are some no, there was no correction that because that's what I said yes. you should have allowed oh. me to finish yes. I yes. said let me finish mm -hmm. I said because I haven't finished my statement mm -hmm. let put me him tell him yes. to be calm <laughs> because he's put Togwe Afede in issue in respect of what he's supposed to have said mm -hmm. And, and that's what he did. What he's supposed to have said is ah, put it in issue. Said what he said. Oh, oh, you said what he said. What he said. No, I won't why? let it pass. No, no, no. I won't no. let it yes. pass. If why won't this, you be a gentleman? I would, I would agree to be not a gentleman on this platform when you are going to put words into my mouth. Please, I need to, you I need to check Mr. Jantwan. Yes, Mr. Malba, that's fine. I don't fine. know if I will interpret what he said. You, you gave your interpretation. Ah, Abu also so gave his interpretation. Yes, Look, so it will not pass. If you put words, lies in my mouth, I will stop you. It's not passing. Nobody's letting it pass. Yes, Abu, please carry on. You have it. Please carry on, wrap up, and then let, let me you have Mr. Jantua. We are not in a boxing ring. You we are not, yes. Please carry on. We are not in a Unless you refine what you are saying. There are many ways of I killing you. Can, you so can kill a cat. Please carry on. Kill a cat is different. If you say lies about me, I will not tell lies about you. How serious I am about you. I love him. Let me remind you of the text that came in. They said you have a nice conclusion. Let's keep it that way. Yes, but carry on. You see in your heat, if I say lies about you. No, Abu, please carry on. Anyway, you let me proceed. You're making a point. Yes, please wrap up for us, and then we have Mr. Jantua. Yes. Point that make it simple, and I want to settle that issue with one final quotation. <laughs> I settled it another quotation yesterday okay. when we went to Togbe Afede. Togbe Afede made the statement about the voter region not being a house, a lawyer housewife. He didn't end there, he said something else. So I will read what he said. And then on that basis, your viewers and I'm can sure that make, will be subject your, to interpretation from can, no, the no, other no, viewers well. can make a determination whether he was the housewife, the, the hungry husband he was <laughs> referring to was MPP or NDC, whichever it is. This is what Toby said. Quote, quote, we are not happy. The reality is that our people are not happy. There is frustration and misery among Ghanaians 
due to bad economic policies. End quote. I rest my case. Very well. Mr. Gentleman, you, see, you are in the middle of... You see, you see for, me, for me, it's the way forward that's most exactly. important. Exactly. All the political parties should be able to tell us how we are not going to bring Dumso back into our society. Mm -hmm. And for me, as I keep saying, the basis is money. Look, when President Mahama, in his nation of State, of the nation State of the Nation address, when he told us that we are bringing cow power, we are bringing this, we are bringing this, we are bringing that, he did not actually tell us how we were going, supposed to secure the fuel that would drive it. Right. So I would expect every political party, including my own, to tell us if we are given the opportunity to come into power, there's X amount of money we are going to put aside to be able to handle any infraction from any source of our generation uh, uh, mix. And we will do this by probably using oil revenue. We will do this by probably using cocoa revenue. We will do this by probably getting money from elsewhere, not alone. Not alone. Because you see, the loan situation that we have in this country also puts Ghanaians in a difficult situation. Right. We have to pay for that loan. Government, if they don't have the money, will put taxes up and it, it affects the ordinary man. Not alone. We need to be able to, and I would have expected the MPP to tell us the way forward if they are to come to power in terms of not bringing them so back. Yes, take out those things that the NDC haven't done well. And that's what the uh, CPP, uh, when you hear a manifesto launch, you hear all this. Take out what they haven't done well. Look, if a government comes into power, be it MPP, be it NDC, be it CPP, be it PNC, be it PPP, and they do good for the country, let's applaud them. Because what are we doing? We are building a nation. We are building a nation. We are not building a political party. Mm -hmm. We are building a nation. So if any of the political parties who come into power are doing things that are good, let's applaud them because it helps the ordinary man. And the ordinary man votes a party into power because they have confidence problems. in that party to fix the problems. However, if a political party comes into power and they do not do what they are supposed to do, yes, all the opposition parties have the right to criticize what they are doing and show them the way forward because the main thing is building a nation. And I'll give you an example. I just came back from Malaysia and I studied the way they have handled their economy. Yes. <laughs> I studied the way they've handled the economy. The only difference between them and us is that they have a benevolent dictator. Mm. That's the only difference. Now, who betide you as a political uh, person with a position in power? You bringing your interest before the country, you will go to jail because the law stipulates that if you are found bringing your interest before the country, you would face the law. We need to get to that stage where we know MPP is in power, NDC is in power, CPP is in power, P is in power. We are building this nation called Ghana. This budgeting between these two so-called major political parties, <laughs> it does not help us. What it does, rather, it divides us. We can't have a divided country to build a nation. We can't have it. Mm. And as I said, Dumso is not a political thing. At it all. affects everybody. And it is the engine for anything that happens in Ghana today. And so if the NDC, if the MPP feel that Doomso is going to come back in 2017. How are you doing to prevent that? How are you doing to, what are you doing to prevent it? Mm. They are not, NDC are not capable of handling it. Because they, they are saying that they haven't handled it within four years. So they don't have the capacity to handle any new Doomso. Mm. How are you as a political party going to handle it? Mm. That is what the people of Ghana are you trying see, to... Mr. Amal, let me... eight years, mm -hmm. the MPP did not add one kilowatt. That's a lie. To don't, the don't national grid. Let, let me, let me ask grid. this question. Fine. When you ask them, they say, we, we was not we, bro, that me, producing. Me, no, 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 no. I have, we let was me not ask, producing oh, any kilowatt. Let me ask, let, let me ask when you ask, they say, Pong, Pong was let not me, producing any allow, kilowatt. Let me help with the now, conversation, move on. Okay. Now, this is it, Mr. Maliba. Yes. You, you talked about um, FPSO Atamil's coming in to do what FPSO Nkrumah is doing. And so basically that everything 
is stable or we shouldn't necessarily have any There's no fall. need to panic because together with the Sankofa fields, we are going to get 3,000, or is it 300 uh, mm, is, uh, what, what is mm? Mm. Uh, standard, standard cubic, cubic feet. feet of yes. gas. Then you add what is already happening at uh, the Jubilee. So he talks about how do we fuel these machines. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that with the term fields, with Sankofa coming up, with uh, Jubilee, we are going to be self-sufficient to the extent that we will have to even export. So we have to look for market. Because as it is now, as it is now because the machines, we have to pay for them. These uh, machines that we, mm. and whether you, 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 you use, you it use or, not. or not, you have to pay for yes. it. So we have to look for new markets. And which to is why to, I'm to going to that. that. Having said that, so everything basically is cool. We, we have everything in place. So why the need for, you talked about another power bag which is coming. Yes. What is that going to add to? I mean, it's going no. to. No. These are all the measures put in place so that the kind of thing he's looking for, where there will not be a blink. I've heard people say that when you go to some parts of the world, and the, the lights the the doesn't because, blink. Like you said, we want to get whether to that. we use it or not, we're still paying. Yeah, so, so we want to get to a point where there will not be a blink of the lights. Of such. Yes, even if there's going to be maintenance, there will be reserve margin. Mm. You just jump there. But Togo Afede says he's not happy. He's not happy because you call the Togolese, uh, uh, Voltaire's Togolese. That's why he's not happy. Togo Afede is not happy. Mm. You we said need the to take a break. The, 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 the Voltaires are to We are not going to go into all of that. The Voltaires are to We are taking a break. We are watching and listening to New Day Saturday Edition. We are live on TV3, live on 3FM 92.7, also live on Connect 97.1 in Takradi, and we're streaming live on the internet at 3news.com. Uh, we'll be moving on to the next topic, but before then, Mr. Jantua, you, you're wrapping up. Yes, I, would, that I, just wanted to issue. Yes, I just wanted to remind the NDC that we didn't we never knew that the West African ga gas pipeline was going to be breached. We never knew that the torrent on FPS Ukwam and Kroma was mm -hmm. going to cause problems for us. And so it is important, although they talk about all the different sources of uh, uh, fuel we have that will not let Dumso Dumso come back. Anything can happen with these generation plants. And so it is important for them to be able to make sure that we have adequate funding available if anything is to go wrong to buy crude mm. for us to be able to power those generation plants we have that use crude otherwise we are back into doom so mm. doom so i would like just a second mm -hmm. please i mean um i also have my second <laughs> you see this but this is not please. we're having a discussion we have not into yes. this Abukarian. it's just a point is made mm -hmm. which i want to give a, sure. um, um, some information about uh, mm -hmm. and they say it a lot mpp didn't add even one megawatt mm -hmm. mpp didn't you know propaganda can let you believe a lie to be the truth mpp added a lot of megawatts to our generation capacity you recall sometime in 2006 the kufu administration engaged in retrofitting of the akosomo dam the generation capacity <laughs> of the akosomo dam at the time the retrofitting was done was 912 megawatts. And this was the generating capacity since Dr. Nkrumah built the Akosomo Dam. As a result of the retrofitting, the generation capacity of Akosomo moved from 912 megawatts to 1,020 megawatts. The difference in terms of the addition was 108 megawatts of power. Look, and I can go on and on. The, 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 no, the, it's fine. I mean, no, okay. let, me just, let, me just, let me just conclude. The, the Tema Tema plant, the Tema Tema power plant one, was completed in 2008. It added 126 megawatts. The, the mine reserve plant, which was facilitated by the Kofu administration, was completed in 2007. It added 80 megawatts. When you put all of that together, it we got 314 megawatts in addition, and many more. Very without well. even Asogli. Asogli, which was a private initiative, okay. constructed and completed under the Kofu That's so fine. I'm sure Abu, that, that is information MPP that is out there. People want to know. MPP didn't add one megawatt. Find that to, 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 to yeah, that validate that or otherwise. So, but we're moving on. Oh, we, so we're moving on to. Mr. Manva, what else oh. are you going to say to us? He said this. Are you going to say that it didn't happen? I've told you why we added. No, Abu. What I'm going to say is that. 
the people of the Volta region are oh. offended by Nana Akufado referring to them as Togolese and then saying that they are voting one way, one way, one way, one way. So they are offended by the one way voting. Please, we are moving on. We are looking at another issue that was raised at the NPP press conference this week, which is the Chinese Development Bank loan and what is happening with that. We know uh, a task force has been set up to basically negotiate for the disbursement of the outstanding balance on that. But perhaps just for some background, we know this Chinese Development Bank loan was to three billion, was to come in to boost the country's infrastructure, including, I mean, a number of roads, expansion of the Takra Airport, Satuabo Gas Project, and all of that. Now, there's been some issue with the disbursements. I mean, it came in piecemeal. It's still, we still have about, is it two billion outstanding? Yeah. And that's what we are hoping that eventually there will be disbursement to that effect. So I would want to start, yes, Mr. Maleba. What is your question? My question here, I just need to, we need to understand this. The loan as it is, mm -hmm. what is outstanding? It's two billion like you indicated. Two billion that is outstanding? Yes. Okay, so we currently have one billion disbursed. Yes. And two billion yes. outstanding. Yes. yes. So then back to organizers of the press conference. What is the issue with the CDB loan? It's a pretty straightforward matter. Um, the government of the NDC originally planned to source a loan of three billion uh -huh. United States dollars for them from the China Development Bank. Um, uh, whatever the reason was, they couldn't source all of that money. Um, I think they, they got 1.5 billion or so. Now, the claim by the MPP... It's currently 1 billion actually has been disbursed. Okay. But, but the amount that is expected is 1.5 billion. Now, the claim that we have made is that our gas reserves, um, petrochemical reserves, are being used as a, a, a quick procure. Is, is a quick procure for this loan. Um, I've had several government officials, particularly the Minister of Finance, who has effectively and uh, substantially corroborated the MPP's claims. I mean, because he said that they went back to Parliament to review the loan agreement and brought to 1.5. So, that's why I was seeking that clarification from Samali. But because but if it's 1.5, <laughs> then technically what it means is we have an outstanding balance of 500 million, isn't it? No, let, okay. Let's Anyways, see. No, ca please no. carry on. We will, well, we will. But, but what I, there's even been an issue which has been raised. Which issue is to the effect that the loan agreement having been approved by parliament and the approval of that loan agreement being one which has a term, um, uh, which has a provision for three billion, has been the facility amount. The Ministry of Finance then goes back to Parliament to seek a revision of that agreement. And the revision of the agreement brings the facility amount to 1.5 billion. Now, and it will mean that the terms of the original loan agreement has been altered. The Ministry of Finance goes back to renegotiate, and it will interest you to know that the amount of money allocated for, and I'll get back to that more strongly, the amount of money allocated just for the revision or the renegotiation, just for the revision and renegotiating of this loan, as in allowances and hotels and what have you, a loan is supposed to cost the Ghanaian taxpayer 6 million Ghana cities. I have noted that down. I'll come back to that. 6 million Ghana cities. But the point I'm making, and the issue I'm raising, is that wouldn't it be uh, right for me to suggest that once the loan agreement has been re uh, reviewed, if the government is sourcing or, or, or has gone to renegotiate and is increasing the amount it's going to receive, it, it will require another parliamentary approval, I would think. Because the original parliamentary approval was in respect of a particular then... loan agreement. The government then goes to renegotiate and ups the amount that it is going to receive. 
And yet, they don't go back to parliament for a parliamentary approval. That's a major matter that we need to talk about. But substantively on the issue of our petrochemicals being used, being used as a quick procure or consideration for this loan, the Minister of Finance, and I heard it myself, has made suggestions or has given information which corroborates the MPP's claim, and which is the, to the effect that we are going to um, uh, use the proceeds of our petrochemical sales to amortize this loan. And that essentially is what the MPP is saying. The MPP is saying that we have used our petrochemical uh, 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 reserves or the value uh, thereof as a base, as, as, a, as, as, a, as a consideration for this loan. And that does not augur well for our country. And it's going to take us 19 years to pay back the loan. Or it's going to keep our petrochemicals and cumbed for 19 years. Now, the point I want to really conclude on, so how is it the case that uh, the renegotiation of a loan, a loan can cost us, and we're not talking about as in fees for lawyers, for accountants, for hotels, for refreshment, and alone six million Ghana cities. You see, Mr. Jantua raised an issue which is very fundamental. He, he asked the question as to how the MPP will resolve himself. And in all of those instances, the first commitment we make, Mr. Jantua, is that we're going to ensure the prudent and efficient management of our national resources. We're not going to have a government, an Akufuado government, that has spent six million for people, for the viewers to appreciate, six okay, million Ghana cities. Uh, uh, six million Ghana cities results into 12 million, $6 million uh, 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 results into 12 million Ghana cities and billions of cities. Very well. Let, me move, on. Let me move on to this. Uh, Mr. 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 Maliba. So this, Mr. Maliba this task force. To say. Why are you worrying about like that? <laughs> this task force. <laughs> this task force, yes. An allocation of $6 million, um, made to them. We have signed a contract. <laughs> Uh, we continue to pay the commitment fees and everything. And these are some of the issues that have come up. So, question is, what, 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 what are they, the tax force, to do? How are they to spend this money? What this is it for? Million. What is it for? Why? Six million. I believe it's a, it's, it's this, a very is this, genuine, is this, legitimate is this, question. Is this, no, 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 Abu, is this born out of the MPP press conference? The yes, MPP press we conference that is we did, that we made that claim. But it we has have come up. It has come up. We even our made gas. The six million. We have mortgaged our gas. To China for that's how many years? Nineteen years. For that 19 is years. true. All right. No, no, Abu, please. That is true. But this is so, also an issue that has come up, so and, me, and I am so moderating this. So, as so, and when so, I deem it appropriate to ask yeah, certain questions, yeah, there are fees, I will do there that. There are fees yes. that you normally will pay for people who are working. Six now, and, and, now, and, 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 now, now, so now, 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 I'm wow. going to answer your question. Six now, million dollars. No, no, Abu, now, please, now, please allow him. The point is that we do not use our gas resources to pay for the loan that we are we are uh, accessing from CDB. what we are doing is the proceeds the proceeds of the gas and that is that is that is a uh, uh, lean gas mm -hmm. check the mpp